There. Over the past few months, several Republican lawmakers have followed the lead of former President Donald Trump in calling for defunding law enforcement agencies, including the FBI. Those calls were fueled by last month's release of the Durham report, which faulted the Bureau for its handling of the 2016 investigations into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia, but stopped short of providing any new evidence that anyone in the government had broken the law. Joining us now, former FBI Director James Comey. He is the author of the new crime novel titled Central Park West. Director Comey, good morning. It's good to see you. We'll talk about your new career as a novelist uh, in just a moment. But I'm curious, we've been talking this morning. We had the head of the Heritage Foundation in the last couple of days following the lead of many Republican lawmakers saying the FBI, the organization that you once led, needs to be defunded. What's your reaction to that? It's just a continuing series of attacks on the rule of law. They're taking a flamethrower to DOJ and to the FBI because it's a threat. Do you see it as a real threat or is it just rhetoric? I think it's a rhetoric-based threat, but it also undermines the confidence of a lot of people in law enforcement, which matters. So as for the Durham report, 300 pages, four years investigating the investigators, one of the things that did come out of it was that procedures regular FBI procedures were ignored, that steps were, were missed along the way in this investigation. In fact, Director Ray said when the report came out, yeah, we acknowledged that a couple of years ago and we've changed all that. Those changes are already in place. Do you acknowledge perhaps that some mistakes were made along the way? Oh, definitely. And they were found four years ago by the inspector general. So there's nothing new in this new document. What were some of those mistakes from your point of view? Oh, that the FBI didn't communicate clearly the status of certain sources. They didn't double check certain information before putting it in a court application for a foreign intelligence wiretap and a bunch of others. And so do you believe now, as these some of these politicians call for defunding of the FBI, that that has been corrected and that now the procedures are in place to avoid those kind of mistakes in the future? I think so. But in complex investigations, there's always going to be mistakes. It doesn't mean the FBI is incompetent, honest and independent. So, Director, with some distance now from your time there with that investigation and everything that came into that 2016 election, are there things that you wish you had done differently? Oh, plenty. I mean, plenty of small things. In the main, I think the FBI did it in the right way during a very difficult time in 2016. So the attacks have obviously been unrelenting from former President Trump, who is very much back on the political scene again. He is, the, at least for the moment, the favorite to be the Republican nominee. Uh, he has been echoed by a number of others in his, in his party as well. What is your sense of it as you talk to your former colleagues there in the Bureau as to the, the impact on morale, or recruitment, or just their ability to get the job done? It's a hard time because a lot of people have internalized the lies they've been told. After the search of Mar-a-Lago, there were days of lies about the FBI acting as some sort of thug army. And that hurts because the FBI needs to knock on doors and get people's help. It needs to be able to stand up in a courtroom and say, I saw this thing and not be seen as a political actor. They are not political actors, but the lies have an impact. And the FBI, of course, was exercising a legal search warrant at Mar-a-Lago. So if Donald Trump were reelected as someone who worked for and alongside the man, what is your sense of the potential danger of his being in the White House, again, if you see it as a danger? I think he poses a, a near existential threat to the rule of law. He will do everything he can in a new term to try to tear down the institutions that he sees as threats and to dismantle them and the people who occupy them, the apolitical people who occupy them. So there is a lot on the ballot in 2024 if he's a candidate, but the rule of law, in my view, is at the very top of the list. Director Comey, Caddy Kay is here with a question for you. Caddy? Yeah, Director, I mean, it must seem like the world has gone full circle to you. You've had your fair share of criticism, of course, from Democrats for the role that you played in the 2016 election, releasing the letter about the ongoing Hillary Clinton investigation into her email server. Now you find that it is um, people on the right, the president of the Heritage Foundation, calling for the FBI to be defunded. I mean, do you, do you just dismiss it all as political noise or... Do you think that the FBI has now become a, an institution that is attacked from be both left and right and is kind of not viable just because so many people have lost confidence in it? 
No, I very much disagree. The FBI is central to the rule of law in America. Its problem and its challenge in a polarized time is that it has no friends in high places. We've spent 50 years as a country trying to keep the FBI away from politicians. In its first 50 years, the director, J. Edgar Hoover, cultivated politicians on both sides of the aisle. So when he had a problem, he had friends in high places. We've worked for half a century to make sure that isn't the case. And when we're polarized, that leaves the FBI in a spot that's very, very difficult. It will be fine because its people are high quality and its work is the way the American people want it to be done. Gene Robinson. Uh, yeah, Director Comey, uh, there's, there's one question that is raised um, by, by Durham and, uh, and, and others that also gets raised on the left, which is about the functioning of the Foreign Intelligence Court um, the, uh, and, and whether that is a, is a process, that whole process is really in keeping with uh, the way we, the way our government is supposed to work, um, that it reinterprets laws in ways that we, we're not allowed to understand and that that sort of thing. Uh, it, on reflection, uh, now that you're out of the bureau, do you have any any um, any view of how that court works and, and its value and, and, and what we should do about it? I think it works very well. It's incredibly valuable because there's work that our government has to do against spies and terrorists that has to be done in secret so the spies and the terrorists don't know what the government's doing to stop them. And so the Foreign Intelligence Court brings together all three branches of government to check and balance each other to try and do the right thing in the right way when you have to do it in secret. Director, uh, Caddy mentioned the letter 10 days before the 2016 election. You wrote about that in your previous book. In your memoir, said I would do some things differently, and it, the, you've said it would make you nauseous, the idea that you had a hand in electing Donald Trump. Now, with some distance from it, would you again have made that, written that letter to Congress that was made public and polling shows definitely swayed voters? Would you have done that again? And I can't bring a magic wand not to be involved at all. Uh, I'd have to do the same thing again. I've thought about it a thousand times. There were two doors. They both led to hell. We chose the one that was least bad, chose it for the right reasons. I understand why people see it differently. They think we should have gone in the other door. Even with the benefit of hindsight, given what we knew then, I don't think we had a choice. So no regrets about that? Oh, plenty of regrets, but no regrets about the way that decision was made. And my judgment hasn't changed that it was the least terrible option that we faced. All right, so let's talk about the current book. It is called Central Park West. It's a crime novel, your debut as a novelist. What sent you to the world of, of novels? Nudging from a nonfiction editor who kept referring to parts of my memoir like writing as scenes. And I said, dude, they're not scenes, they're my life. And he said, but you can write narrative, you write dialogue, you should try this. And so I finally decided to give it a try. It was easier to think about the farther I got from government service. And I did it in partnership with my wife. A lot of my family was involved. And I found it harder than nonfiction, but addictive and a ton of fun. So this is what I want to do when I grow up. I don't want to work as a lawyer. I'd love to be able to write for a living. And you draw on your past life as a prosecutor. So tell us a little bit about the story that you write here. Yeah, I was a mob prosecutor in the 1980s and 90s in New York. And so this is a story about the mob, but the protagonist is a woman who is a federal prosecutor in Manhattan who is inspired by my oldest daughter, who, when I was writing this, was on her feet prosecuting Glenn Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's partner in abusing young girls, in the same courtroom, the literal same courtroom in which I prosecuted John and Joe Gambino when she was four years old. Mm. And so I was able to write a story that's current day, drawn from my experience, where the protagonist is inspired by my four girls, but inspired in particular by my oldest daughter. And then just what was the process for you like to turning to writing fiction, which is obviously very different than what you've written previously? Did, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it in part because my partnership with my wife, Patrice, was essential to this. She's the idea person. She has an ability to think up cool stories that I don't. So we would sit over coffee and debate until we got to a great story. Then she'd send me off and I would write. And she would suggest edits, suggest comments, and we would iterate and iterate and iterate. And our marriage survived that. <laughs> in fact, it was a ton of fun and I think produce something that people are going to enjoy. The new crime novel is titled Central Park West, former FBI director, now novelist, James Comey. Thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. Great to be with you all. Coming up next, we'll show you Republican Senator Lindsey Graham's response to Russia putting out a warrant for his arrest. And we'll go live to Des Moines, Iowa, ahead of the first presidential campaign event 
for Ron DeSantis. What's that going to look like? Morning Joe's coming right back.